There's been a drought in Bali. So they're like spending what they have so little money and they're spending it on clean water. Normally they capture water from the rain and they have like slanted roofs and they capture it. We give them like water filters. There's so much more you can do with your life and with your money. No, we're excited, man. So I wanted to start with the first question, Tim. Where the hell are you located right now? Where are you? So on social media, I'm in Zanzibar, but that was like two trips ago, uh, or three trips ago, because after that, I went to Bali, Paris. Now I'm in Italy for the next Got few it. weeks. I'm all over so the place. I, I know why you post a little bit delayed, but can you kind of give the audience uh, the story of why you started posting delayed? Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to be well known. Like I appreciate, you know, people coming up to me and it's cool, but you know, it's also a gift and a curse. Sometimes I want a little privacy. Also like my friends and family, you know, deserve a little privacy. So I've had to like pull back, you know, I started very much in people's faces and just live all the time and I've, I've kind of drawn back just a little bit. You know, I think people should be a little more careful just about what they post on social media. We don't really realize the consequences. Nothing bad has happened, but you know, you just you just have to choose what kind of life you want, you know? So didn't didn't someone try to kidnap you once? Not not kidnap me, but they, they met me at the airport when I wasn't expecting them. And what? I, I have a few stories like that, but again, it's it's Nothing terrible has happened, nothing even that bad, but it's just like, wow, like we throw ourselves out there. There's a lot of people out there. Um, you know, you, you just got to be a little careful. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little delayed. It's taking the fun out of uh, social media a little bit, but they're worse things. I remember sitting at the, uh, the conference one year. I went to one of the trader investor summits back in uh, 16 or 17. It was like one of those, but all of a sudden we're sitting there and uh, – Tim Sykes starts tweeting and we're staring right at Tim Sykes. And we're like, this man is a fucking magician. How is this happening? And he was like tweeting from Africa. And we're like, or I am maybe I'm living in the matrix right now, but this is fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, you, you, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, you know, so I, I used to be like everyone like post where you are all the time, like be fully transparent. Now I'm just like, be transparent with your trading, like show your losses. That's, I think that matters more than like your specific location. It doesn't matter whether I'm in Bali or New York or, or Italy or Paris. Like I'm always keeping New York hours. Like when I'm in Asia, I'm extra crazy. Cause like I'm up all night trading. And then we have like charity or like I, I go on a lot of food trips in Japan. So it's either food or charity during the day and then trading at night. So I'm just a psycho more than normal. Yeah, you are always working and traveling with people and just like going like absolutely crazy. Do you ever get tired of making content? Because you have been going, making a lot of content, man. Like, and it must get tiring over the years. Is there ever a time where you're like, oh my God, like I'm so tired? Yeah, I mean, the cool thing also about posting later is like I have like seven or eight trips that I haven't even posted. Like some, you know, sometimes we work with hotels and they're pissed. They're like, where, when are you posting? I'm like, don't worry, I'm doing it. And I also was like fat last year. Now I'm thinner. So like, I'm going to post one of these. Trips and people are going to be like, you were, you're fat again. And I'm like, yeah, you know, but it's really from like last year. Um, you know, so I, I, I have content stored up. Um, but yeah, sometimes it gets tiring. But again, like the world is so fascinating. I, I can never get over it. I've been to now 134 countries. I'm running out of countries. Um, but we're, we live in the most fascinating time in the history of the world and, and more people need to see it. And I, I wish that it was the matrix, you know, maybe like Elon and Neuralink will work or something in the future where like I can transfer all of this into your heads and you'll be like, oh my God, Sri Lanka is amazing. Like there's so many crazy places out there. So it does get tiring sometimes, but at the same time, like I'm just motivated. It's crazy. I feel like Tim, you've been doing this for so long. Like I feel like you were really like a, a pioneer and like not only like on social media, but like advertising yourself and like being a part of it how did you even come up with that idea to like really put yourself out there like so much of your life yeah i mean i was just a drunk i drank a lot and and people laughed when i was drunk when i said funnier stuff and uh i was on wall street warriors i was drunk in every episode i was very introverted back that. then so i needed i needed liquid courage and like it helped because i i made it more entertaining like trading can be boring finance money people can be boring so i was like screw this let's Let's have fun with it. Now I don't need to drink and I can't drink for shit. And now I'm just like, I'm out there too much. I have like verbal diarrhea. Like I can't, I can't pull it back in even if I wanted to. Um, so 
it's it, it's just getting it out there. And again, like we we're all fortunate. Are you struggling to find the right stocks to trade? Are you making money for one, two, maybe three weeks in a row and losing it all in one day? Are you struggling with sizing up on your trades? Well, I found that the best way to fix these problems is to trade alongside a millionaire trader live on stream with no delays. My Investing Club's new live trading stream is the missing puzzle piece to your trading. Every day at 9 a.m., I share my screens, find the best stocks to trade, and build my watches live. Then I execute those trades live on screen. It's like you're sitting right next to me as I trade every every single day. Due to the high demand of the screen share, we only have a few spaces available every single month. So if you're seeing this now, it means that space is still available. And here is the best part. If I do not generate $20,000 in realized gains per month on live stream, you do not pay. So go to myinvestingclub.com slash live trading to get 50% off your first month on the live stream. Spaces are limited and filling up quick. What do you have to lose? This may change your life to be alive right now with all this technology and you know we're all trading that this is the best market we're in the the most successful country in the history of the world like people just need perspective so it, it feels like i'm doing it for a while because a lot of you guys are young and maybe i've been doing it you know i've been trading for a quarter of a century that's older than a lot of my students um but i've been it's older than harry <laughs> right? harry here i mean he's like that's older than me <laughs> that's impressive it's very and impressive. you can grow more facial hair than i can still so like it, i just i get like patches like it's it's like weird you're like yo calm down want to be rabbi like it's not good i'm in the same boat <laughs> whatever works i mean it's it we're, we're still just beginning like it, the, the internet is only like what 30 years old like we don't even realize how big this is this is like being alive when like when the printing press got invented or you know this is this is revolutionary and people still don't truly capitalize on it we have a lot of misinformation i think people who are using this technology the wrong way like the kardashians where like now girls do you know what the average guess this here's this how many average photos does a girl take before they post one photo on social media? Thanks to the Kardashians and a lot of other people like that. Yes. On average. It has to be 50. I, I would guess 100. I'm going to go low and say seven. The, the study that I read said 38. But taking yeah. 38, understand, they're not going to like 38 different places. It's like a selfie here, 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 here. No, I don't like that. No, I don't like that. And you're in this this zone where it's so stupid and it's so vapid and it's sad. And like, I was even, I posted on uh, some, somebody po posted like Kim Kardashian's sink. And it's like this cool sink where like you, it, it looks flat, but there's like indentations and she had it redesigned seven times. And I'm just like, how much money can you waste? Like, I get it. I like luxurious things too, but how many schools can you build? How many other people could you help with your platform? But she just doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Something that you mentioned, Tim, is that perspective shift. And I know that uh, you travel the world. So is there a specific place that you went to that you kind of had that perspective shift in your own life? So many different perspective shifts. I'll, I'll say Bali really opened my eyes. I was, you know, at the time, this was before I started my charity. I was going, you know, I've been traveling for a while. This is the beauty of trading. But, you know, there's only so many luxury pools that you can be in. You can be like, look at this luxury pool. Oh, I have a pina colada. That's so beautiful. And it's like, <laughs> it's fun, but it gets boring after a while. So I actually said this to my driver in Bali at the Viceroy Ubud, beautiful resort. And I was like, take me to your village. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, why do you want to see that? Like, we don't have a lot of money. I was like, no, I want to see like the real Bali. And we saw his village met his family. It was really cool. Um, you know, and, and it started me down this path of like wanting to help, you know, other communities, not necessarily just luxury, uh, visit luxury hotels and, and resorts and, and really meeting with the people, especially, you know, we are all from the most valuable, most historically successful country in the world. The dollar goes very far. I know it has a lot of haters, but the dollar can go so far. And now, you know, my charity has donated a little over $8 million. We have 115 schools. Uh, libraries. Now we're doing computer labs. Uh, we have a soccer field in Cambodia. Uh, we're doing two recycling centers now. And the money can just go so far when you see that impact. So I encourage everyone listening to not just go to the normal places. I know that especially in the trading world, you can get stuck in this like Miami, New York, LA, you know, Vegas every now and then, maybe a little Burning Man, maybe a little like Formula One, maybe a little Art Basel. And it's like, come on, like you, you have the same conversations. There's only so many bottles. I like Story too. I like Live, you know, I like Eleven. All these places, they're fun, but like 
there's so much more you can do with your life and with your money. That's incredible, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> I just, I, I think it's very rare to meet someone who actually like puts their money where their mouth is, especially when it comes to like charitable and like, uh, like events and like giving money away. What was like when you started, did you have the concept in your head that you were going to open like a hundred schools or were you like, I just want to do this and like make, and it feels good. But how did you go to like grow this big? So it's like trading. Like you don't, you don't say like, Oh, I'm going to trade a million shares today. You start small paper trade, take small positions, try to find your process, try to find your groove. And that's what I did with the schools. I mean, I, I wanted to build a lot, but I didn't really know how there's some bad charities you have to watch out for. Um, you know, we had our first 3D printed school in Madagascar, which has been like a total mess, but we're trying a new technology. Um, you, you start small and then you see how it goes. And, you know, I didn't intend on doing computer labs or recycling centers, but we found out that's what the community needed. That's why it's good not just to donate the money, but to go to the community. You see what they need. Like now we're doing clean water uh, programs because we met with people and, and families. We're building homes now. We have we built 13 homes in Bali. I went there just on my last trip. I haven't even posted the video yet, but we're talking with the families. There's been a drought in Bali. So they're like spending what they have so little money and they're spending it on clean water. Normally they capture water from the rain and they have like slanted roofs and they capture it. We give them like water filters, but there hasn't been water. So they have to go to the grocery store, buy water. And it's like, this is terrible. So now we're, we're working on new water plants, um, you know, to get them more clean water. And just by talking to them, um, and, and seeing them in person, you really find this out. I met this other family. We built them a home. Um, you know, we have one of their children in a school. And then I was talking with the family and, you know, we're also filming a documentary. So you guys will be able to see all of this soon. We've been filming a documentary for two years. We want to showcase all of it. But just going there in person, meeting the family, there was another uh, one of their children who's too, like, afraid of going to school because he doesn't know how to read. He's, like, a little behind. He's afraid that, like, the other students are going to make fun of him. And I was like, we'll get you a tutor. We'll get you caught up. And he was like, the dad was crying. He's crying. And I'm like, this is so simple, but they're so like they don't want to ask for help. They're very proud. But, you know, a tutor, I mean, literally, I, I looked at the pricing and it's like $300 for like a year's worth of tutoring and that will catch him up and then he can go to normal school. And he was just too afraid to ask because he's embarrassed. You never have to be embarrassed. Anybody watching this, if you don't know how to read, if you're not good at math, if you're not good at trading, if you're not good at anything, we all start somewhere. You, you should never be too proud to ask for help. That's the beauty of this. Look at this. Where are you guys right now? We're, we're talking all over the world. Where are you all? Colorado. I'm in Jersey. I'm actually in New Brunswick, Canada right now. I'm in Boston. And think about this. This this was not possible just a few years ago. And now we have it all. Like I, I read some report. What? We have like three quarters of a million dollars worth of technology like in our iPhone. And it costs, you know, still costs a lot. But it's, it's crazy how technology prices are coming down. You can get your whole DNA sequence now for like 200 bucks a few years ago. It would have been like millions. Like this yeah. is insane what we can do right now. People just need to be pushed a little and like, you know, made aware. No, that's totally, totally true.